it's I, I call it water is wet. So it's like telling somebody summer is hot, water is wet. And a lot of new writers, introductions are hard. When you're standing Very. up staring at a blank page, you're like, what do I put on this page? <laughs> so sometimes, you know, they try to set the scene and it ends up being like, duh, of course, you know, water is wet. Why are you telling me these things? <laughs> so a perfect example would be, you know, okay, so I'm writing a, a travel article mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell people about the hot restaurants in Paris. And I'm mm -hmm. gonna start off by saying, oh, everybody dreams of going to Paris and Paris is such a beautiful city with so much to do. Okay, duh, everyone knows that. That gave me no value. That yeah. bored me. I'm not even going to keep reading. Yeah. And that's a water is wet statement. Hey, hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Christine. Today, I have with me the lovely, the beautiful Erin Balsa. <laughs> She's an amazing writer. She actually leads a team of writers and other creatives at the Predictive Index. And it's my pleasure to be speaking with her today. Say hi, Erin. Hi, Christine. Thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> Appreciate that. No problem. No problem. So Erin, can you tell the viewers a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Sure. Yep. So my name is Erin Balsa. As Christine said, I'm a marketing director at the Predictive Index. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a B2B SaaS company, mm -hmm. and we're based in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. So my team creates all the content for the entire business. So mm -hmm. that's external content. So marketing content, that's internal content. So anything that we need to share with our employees, and that's content to enable our global network of PI partners. So we're helping them sell and service their clients more successfully as well. So my team does writing, so editorial, graphic design, video, digital learning. Uh, we do podcasts, we do events, well, not big, huge events, that's a separate right. team, but we do uh, virtual events, like mm -hmm. weekly roundtables, webinars, mm -hmm. things like that. So. Mm -hmm. We're pretty busy creating content, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. You do quite a wide range of content. That's amazing. That's a really, really amazing. And for the viewers, what we're going to be doing, we're doing this conversation in two parts. So the first part of the conversation is going to be about how you can become a better writer. If you are a freelance writer and you want to learn how to up your skills. And then the second part is going to be about the connection between marketing and writing. So why is writing important for your business? If you're thinking about having a writer in, as a part of your team. So Erin, for the first part of this conversation, what I wanted to start with is the fact that you were once a teacher and uh, you you have transitioned into this whole marketing career and what i noticed is that you've been using your teaching skills on linkedin to share valuable insights about how people can become better writers how people can use writing to improve their brands and you have an entire hashtag around it called erin 100. so can you explain to us how your background in teaching has been helping you as a writer as a marketer and why you decided to start this Erin 100 series. Sure. So I think that it's not necessarily my background or my formal education in teaching. Mm -hmm. It's more just kind of a, a passion for helping people. And mm -hmm. I used to do a lot of that, obviously working with students. And in my last job, I was working at an agency, a content marketing agency, mm -hmm. and we hired a lot of entry level writers. So mm -hmm. fresh out of college or maybe former journalists who were brand new to content marketing. So a lot of my day was spent teaching people, what is content marketing? What's the marketing funnel? How does, you know, the interplay of marketing and sales work? Mm -hmm. What's an ebook? How do you, you know, move people along in their journey? So I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And I don't do as much of that on the day-to-day -day basis in my day job, um, mm -hmm. just because I don't have such a, a huge team. And, you know, the, the team I have, they've all, all, the writers I have, they've been on the team for at least a year or more. Mm -hmm. So I don't get to do as much of that in the day to day. And I love mm -hmm. to teach. So that's why I decided to start building um, an, a network on LinkedIn and focus specifically on writers, either entry level mm -hmm. writers who are trying to just get started or mm -hmm. anyone that's someone like me who maybe started off as a journalist and then wanted to get into content marketing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And what has the, what has the feedback been on hashtag Erin100 so far? Good so far. Yeah, something that um, I haven't checked recently, but the last time mm -hmm. I checked, I had maybe like 300 or 350 Ooh. followers on that hashtag. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. And guys, if you're watching this now, you should really follow that hashtag on LinkedIn. There's so much valuable insight on it. Really, really, really good. 
All right. So from from that series, Erin, I know you've been giving a lot of tips. What would be your top tip to someone who wants to become a better writer? It could be something from the series that you already have or something that you haven't mentioned yet. But what's your number one tip? Yeah, so the way I'm approaching the series, starting off with just general tips just to be a, a better writer. Mm -hmm. And then from there, understanding content marketing. And mm -hmm. then from there, if you decide that you want to um, go into management, you want to lead a team, I'm going to kind of take the series in that direction. Okay. But I'd say the most important foundational tip is kind of what I kicked off with. It was my tip number one, mm -hmm. which all pertains to being open to feedback, mm -hmm and being mm -hmm. able to receive it gracefully and not let it bring you down. Right. Because a lot of writers, you know, they might have been the best writer at their high school or in college, they got an English degree and they think they're amazing. Mm -hmm. And then they go to work with a client for the first time or they join a company and they get edited by an experienced editor for their first time and they get mm -hmm. really hurt and bent out of shape because mm -hmm. their piece is gonna get, you know, ripped to shreds yep. many times. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, you know, subjectivity um, when it comes to writing and mm -hmm. people have different opinions on what good content is. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, if you have clients and this person is a business owner, they might be uh, even giving you feedback that's not necessarily the right feedback. Like when right. I have worked with clients, they're like, oh, could you do this? I've, I've heard through the grapevine that it should be this way and I have to educate people. Like, no, actually that's going to detract from your message or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So mm -hmm. I say the most important thing that anyone needs to understand is you're probably not as good of a writer as you think you are. So if you're like, oh, I'm an amazing writer, I'm a nine on a scale of one to 10, bring mm -hmm. that down a few points. Mm -hmm. Start off with that mindset that you have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. You're good, but you can always get better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you should keep that mindset. Even if you've mm -hmm. been writing for 10 years, 20 years, you should always know that you're only as good as your client thinks you are, or you're only as good as, you know, mm -hmm. you're never going to be done learning. You just have to have that open to feedback um, growth mindset. And I think mm -hmm. if you can have that, then mm -hmm. the feedback that you do get from time to time mm -hmm. won't sting as much. Writers have to have a thick skin. Yes, that's very, very true. Are there any resources that you would recommend to writers who want to up their skills? So if you're just starting out, I think mm -hmm. that follow experts or mm -hmm. who you consider to be experts on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, subscribe to newsletters, mm -hmm. uh, like Marketing Sherpa is pretty good. I've always liked them. HubSpot's really good when you're just starting out just to learn the fundamentals. And then mm -hmm. in terms of just improving your own writing skills, I think mm -hmm. it's good to work with a trusted editor mm -hmm. and maybe you can get that person to, to hire you and give you feedback, but right. inline feedback. So if someone's like looking at your content and they're going in and they're highlighting mm -hmm. and telling you, this is how you can tighten this up or this doesn't work because mm -hmm. of, of this. Just kind of being edited in line can be really, really helpful. And right. if you can't get work, you're trying really, really hard and you're pitching all these people and you can't get work, hire an editor, set aside some money, mm -hmm. ask somebody you trust if they can yeah. edit something. You can write a blog post on your own blog or write something mm -hmm. up in a Google doc and give it to that person and ask them to give you structural and developmental feedback. And that can mm -hmm. help a lot. Mm -hmm. that's that's amazing advice i love that you also mentioned actually hiring an editor to look at your own work I, many people don't think about that that, that that's a really really good point and what especially you... can yeah, i just add on sorry to interrupt <laughs> and especially you know in a global marketplace now so a lot of people are creating content in english and it might not be their first language and they might right. have a really strong mastery of english but there are some certain nuances that they don't know unless somebody actually points that out to them right so one example that i saw just the other day someone had messaged me um being like hey can you hire me and the way that he had phrased the email was am a good writer and i thought like huh that's not even proper english because it right. should say i am a good writer or i'm a good writer right so my husband was sitting next to me and my husband is actually not a native english speaker he's from portugal okay. so he explained to me he's like well where's that person from and i explained and he educated me mm -hmm. he said well in that because my husband's bilingual speaks a bunch of languages and he mm -hmm. said in that language it's normal to say am you wouldn't say i am so oh. i said oh so this poor person is probably thinking that they're doing the right thing but when they're pitching or reaching out to native 
young Americans, yes, we don't right. speak that way. So it looks like, oh, this person doesn't know what they're doing. Right. So imagine now if that person had hired an American editor, if they're trying to sell to an American market, you need to know what your audience, you know, wants, wants. and what's going to turn them off. And exactly. I think that probably but would have been worth the hundred dollars or whatever that you would spend because mm -hmm. now you're like, oh, I need to say I am blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. And then they'll actually maybe keep reading my email. Exactly, but. exactly, exactly, exactly. What would you say are the biggest writing mistakes writers make when creating online content based on your experience as an editor? So are we talking like blog post mistakes? Because there's so many different nuances <laughs> depending on the types of content. I figured you'd ask that, you know. Yeah, we can focus on blog articles. Yeah. Okay. So one that I see a lot mm -hmm. is it's I I call it water is wet. So it's like telling somebody summer is hot, water is wet. And a lot of new writers, introductions are hard. When you're standing Very. up staring at a blank page, you're like, what do I put on this page? <laughs> so sometimes, you know, they try to set the scene and it ends up being like, duh, of course, you know, water is wet. Why are you telling me these things? <laughs> so a perfect example would be, you know, okay, so I'm writing a, a travel article mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell people about the hot restaurants in Paris. And I'm mm -hmm. gonna start off by saying, oh, everybody dreams of going to Paris and Paris is such a beautiful city with so much to do. Okay, duh, everyone knows that. That gave me no value. That yeah. bored me. I'm not even going to keep reading. Yeah. And that's a water is wet statement. And I think that's a natural tendency for new writers just to put something on the page and they don't quite know how to capture your interest right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And since you've brought up that point, what tips would you give for creating an attention, an attention grabbing introduction that's relevant to the brand? Well, I actually posted a social post about this this morning and it oh, pertained mostly to a LinkedIn post, but the same kind of uh, tactics yes, can right. work well for a blog, a blog post. So mm -hmm. you could lead with an interesting statistic. Mm -hmm. Now, not all statistics exactly. are interesting. I see a lot of boring statistics being used all the time and statistics can be water is wet too. So mm -hmm. if I'm writing a marketing article for a senior marketer, I'm not gonna say, you know, 95% of companies have a blog. Like, yeah, I know that that's not interesting or new to me. Mm -hmm. If I'm writing that to a business owner who's thinking, hmm, maybe I should have a blog, then mm -hmm. that, that statistic would work well because mm -hmm. if they're new to marketing and they don't know if they should do it and they're trying to investigate, that is gonna be like, oh yeah, wow, 95% of people like me have a blog. Yeah, I should do a blog. Right. But if you're writing to a marketer, that's a water is wet statement. That's boring. Yeah. So surprising statistics, interesting mm -hmm. statistics, mm -hmm. interesting, not to the whole world, just to your audience, just mm -hmm. to your reader. Right. So really knowing your reader. So statistics, um, listicles can be interesting to people because mm -hmm. some people, they're not in the mood to sit down and read a big meaty article. They just want to get boop, quick tips and a that's listicle kind of provides a way for someone they can invest maybe three minutes in reading the full article or they can just skim the headlines then, and they can right. still get some sort of takeaway right so listicles can be good because some people just want a quick quick value right um, personal stories it depends on if that's a you know a linkedin post or a company blog and a lot of writers think that personal stories might not be appropriate for company blogs and they're not okay. all the time but they can be Mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. you have, so for example, if I'm writing for a marketing automation tool, right. and in my experience running a content team for years at a company, I mm -hmm. use this marketing automation tool. It would be a lot more interesting to the reader to get my experience, my value, my takes, because I've done this thing firsthand. So it might exactly. make sense for me to write that in the first person. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm writing, somebody hires me to write about, oh, I don't know, something I know nothing about. So let's say law. I'm not going to write anything in first person. It doesn't make any sense, you know? So you really have to be a subject matter expert right. to write in first person about something. Right, right. Well said. And I love that you mentioned the importance of understanding your audience when you're creating a blog article specifically. What mm -hmm. tips would you give to a writer to help that person do audience research and effective audience research at that? So if you're a freelance writer, you can <laughs> ask the person who hired you to mm -hmm give you all the information they have. Like most companies have personas. Personas are, for anyone who doesn't know what a persona is, it's mm -hmm. a document or uh, some sort of deck mm -hmm. that lets you know what your typical reader would be like. It might mm -hmm. tell demographic information, 
which is fine. Demographics are kind of important, but what you really need to understand is their assumed expertise on whatever topic it is you're writing so that you don't tell them things they already know. Mm -hmm. And you also want to know like what is their biggest challenges so that you can position the information to solve their biggest challenges. And also what are their biggest goals? Like what do they hope to get? What are they working toward? What mm -hmm. is the thing that drives them to get out of bed every, every morning? And how can you create content to help them get there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's well, knowing okay. your audience, because like if I'm mm -hmm. writing for, if I'm writing a LinkedIn post for an entry level writer, mm -hmm. what drives them might be, damn, I just want to put food on the table. I just got to get whatever work I can get. So right. they just need to help me get that paid article, even if it's a hundred dollars. If right. I'm writing something to like a, you know, a CMO or, you know, a VP of sales, they're driving revenue for an entire company. So it's going to have to be completely different language, completely different, like level of information. Mm -hmm. So you just have to know, and you don't want to give somebody that's a beginner too much information. Right. And you don't want to give somebody obviously who's an expert, not enough information. So it's right. really have to be really, really good at tailoring your message, depending on who you're writing to. Right. Awesome. Awesome. Are there any final tips that you would give to somebody who is a new freelance writer and isn't sure how to exactly start their career successfully? As soon as you can get a niche. <laughs> <laughs> niche down don't be a generalist a okay. lot of writers you know they are like oh i'll take whatever i can get because mm -hmm. that's opening up the aperture you know if i can write about health and beauty and technology and this and that that's great and yes you might be able to get more jobs but if you're not an expert in something the jobs probably aren't going to pay very well mm -hmm. so you might be writing 10 articles for 50 dollars a pop that's you know I'm really bad at math, but I think that's like $500, <laughs> yes. 10 times 50, okay, $500. Yes, <laughs> or if you're an expert in something, imagine now you're an expert in whatever this thing is. Mm -hmm. Now imagine if you can write one article and you can make $500. And that's the magic of niching down. You can just mm -hmm. make more money in, a, in the same time period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well said, well said. Okay, so this is the end of the first part of our interview, everybody. We focused on tips for freelance writers, so how to become a better writer. And for the second part of this interview, we're going to be focusing specifically on the connection between writing and marketing. So why is it important for you as a business owner to have a writer as a part of your team? Why is writing important for your brand? Thank you so much, Erin, for being here for the first part. And we're going to get into the second part of our interview. And guys, please, please, please watch the second part of the interview. There, there's going to be a lot of information there that will be beneficial to you and your brand.